بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما In the last uh, short reflection I talked about taqwa and the, and the idea of taqwa being one of the fundamental principles uh, that the Quran is constantly reminding of us. So what I'd like to do is define taqwa first and foremost and then look at the idea that al-aqibatu lil muttaqin or wal-aqibatu lit taqwa. The end affair is always for taqwa and, or for the people of taqwa. So taqwa itself وَحَسِرُ التَّقْوَى إِجْتِنَابٌ وَامْتِثَالٌ فِي ظَاهِرٍ وَبَاطِنٍ بِذَا تُنَالٌ This is what Ibn Ashar, one of the great Moroccan scholars, رضي الله عنه, said uh, in his summation that taqwa is imtithal, it's to obey the commandments of God, and ishtinab, it's to avoid the prohibitions. So there's awamr and nawahi in the Qur'an and in the hadith. There are things that the Prophet ﷺ was commanded to tell us were prohibited or disliked or discouraged. And then there's things that he was commanded to tell us were either obligatory or recommended. So the idea of taqwa is essentially the people of taqwa are the people that do what they were commanded and avoid what they were prohibited. And, and they do this through a disciplining of the soul. So there's, there's actually a discipline of the soul that occurs through your life, through practices. And so one of the things about practice is practice is what enables you to incrementally get better at something. So for instance, people who learn a new skill, initially it's very difficult for them. But over time, as they continue to practice, it gets easier and easier. This is the, the process of habituation. كُلُّ شَيْءٍ عَادَ وَلَوْ الْعِبَادَ Everything is habit, even devotion. So, in fact, uh, the great Greek philosopher Aristotle said that virtue was basically the habituation of the soul to a virtuous practice. In other words, you actually habituate over time through constant practice and discipline of the soul yourself to a virtuous practice until it becomes second nature. And so basically what taqwa is, is it is practicing these things and because all fall short of the glory of God, because people will always fall short in their practices, that it becomes very difficult uh, at times to, uh, to be consistent in this. We have what's called toba, which is uh, in, in, in Greek, they call it metanoia, which is a very nice term, which means to change your mind. Toba is literally, toba, taba means to turn or repent. So it's going back to God. And so the people of taqwa, when they fall short of, of, of the expectations upon them, they repent, they turn. If you're, if, you're, if you're driving down the road going the wrong way, you have to make a U-turn. So you might see a sign that says uh, something and you realize I'm going the wrong way, you have to do a U-turn. Well, in the road of life, you're going to sometimes make the wrong turns and then you're going to get signs that tell you that you're on the wrong path. Now, unfortunately, what a lot of people do, they just ignore the signs. In the end, those are basically roads to hell there'll be hell in this life because the nature of sin is that it just creates a lot of misery. So when the Qur'an tells us taqwa, it's telling us that in the end victory is for taqwa, victory is for piety, it's for conscientiousness, it's for all of these things. And so uh, an example of that, there's a great uh, poet uh, Lowell who said truth forever on the scaffold wrong forever on the throne, yet the scaffold sways the future, and beyond the dim unknown standeth God among the shadows, keeping watch above his own. What he meant by that, truth forever on the scaffold, the scaffold is uh, an edifice that you build to hang people. So it's as if truth is always being strung up. So for instance, if you look at the Quran, many of the prophets are actually not successful. 
they actually, they're, they're completely attacked by their own people. They're, but their success is in their conveying the message, despite the fact that they're killed, despite the fact that they're turned upon. Uh, Ibrahim السلام, with Nimrod and his people, uh, he was not successful in turning them back to God. He was successful in conveying the message. And this is the meaning of truth forever on the scaffold, wrong forever on the throne. So Pharaoh is, chases Moses out of, uh, of Egypt. Moses has to flee for his life. But the point is that the scaffold sways the future, that the arc of the, the moral arc of the universe is long, but it bends towards justice. This is what we have to be constantly reminded of, that al-aqibatu lil-muttaqeen wal-aqibatu lil-taqwa. We have to remind ourselves constantly that no matter how dark it looks, no matter how dark it gets, we believe that the end is for taqwa, the end is for piety, the end is for the people of conscientiousness. This is extremely important to keep in mind and inshallah I'll explore this some more in our next session. Jazakumullah khairan, wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.